I want to thank you for 200,000 subscribers. Every 100,000, if I continue to be lucky, I'm going to do some videos where I talk a little bit about my tools or my toys. And today I'm going to talk about my watch collection and my knife collection. And I don't have much of a watch collection, but I have a lot of knives to show you. So as I show them, I'm going to hold them to the camera and lay them out on the table. So hopefully this GoPro shot is going to look pretty cool by the end of the episode. Uh, this is just a ammo box that I keep stuff in. I'll go through the watches quickly. So I have these Xeno watch bezels. That's what they're called. Three of them. I always like the large face. And then I have a Tag Heuer, 1991 or 92. I bought this as a gift for myself. Uh, it was about $1,000. I bought it in Hong Kong. So this is, these are my only two real expensive watches. People often ask why I wear the Rolex. It's a real Rolex. It was given to me as a gift about 15 years ago. And for the first few years I had it, I kept it super precious. I kept it in my sock drawer. I never wear it. I was always making sure I didn't scratch it. And I always wore these watches. These are repaired because what I found, I'd be working all day long and then I'd look at my watch face and the watch crystal will have been gone for an hour. I didn't even realize I broke it. The hands are missing. The knob is gone. This is the type of thing that happens to these type of watches. And then I started wearing kind of like a G-Shock for a while and I just hate the digital. I like to see the hands. I just started slowly more and more wearing the Rolex in the shop. I'm going to start the knives by what I'm carrying right now. Charade, Uncle Henry, cheap knife. I like to carry cheap knives as well as keep expensive knives. The cheap knives are good because I can pry things and I'm not too worried about them. Got this at Cabela's. Uh, I modded this a little bit. I sanded it smooth and thin to keep it in my pocket. I love these knives, but they're always bulky. I'm always trying to figure out a way to mod them, and I have a few ideas. This is a knife that was given to me by Bobby. Bobby in Louisville, thank you for this. I don't know if you lent it to me or if you gave it to me. I still haven't figured it out. Designed by G&G Hawk. It's a great, great knife for camping or whatever. So this is the type of knife I keep in my toolbox. I've had this for probably 15 years. It's a total POS from China. Throw it in the table, not worry about it. And mix paint with it. You can see it's got Bondo on it. And not be overly concerned because this knife was... 10 bucks. This is a knife. I bought five of these. The handles came with wood on them. I think it's like a walnut kind of wood. I made these handles. Somewhere in here is one of the original versions. Occasionally I buy cheap knives just to practice modding them and experimenting with them. Best knuckles. These are uh, pretty deadly. But they have Grand Theft Auto on them, which is cool. Recently I did my ice pick video and I was definitely inspired by this subconsciously. I didn't realize until after I did it how similar mine is to this thing that I bought in a catalog from China. I usually buy two of everything I think is really cool. So you'll see I have doubles of the knives that I really like. This is the knife I bought most recently. I bought this just the other day in, uh, in and around Santa Barbara in California. This is a, an assist from Benchmade. I don't know the names of these knives, so you knife nerds are going to get mad at me. I don't know what the, the model number is called, so you could probably say that under every comment. It's a great knife. I have a lot of Leathermen. I have the very first one I ever bought. They're all worn out. All the mechanisms wear out, so I buy a new one. The blades get dull. Sometimes the blades get too small because I sharpen them down. This one isn't so bad, but it's actually worn out. This is really worn out here. And uh, so I have a lot of Leatherman. I'll go through them really quick. Here's the first one I ever bought. This one is from the 80s. And whenever Leatherman started, this is from like two years later. Constantly lose the tools, so I'm always buying the new versions of the tools. I have these in every toolbox. Here's a, a Crunch knockoff from, from China. I used to go to China a lot, and I would always buy the knockoff stuff. So this is the, the Crunch is the Leatherman version of a vice grip. A worn out wave. I don't know what's wrong with it. There's always one thing wrong with them which makes me want to buy a whole new one. What you see as far as my Leatherman collection represents what I haven't lost yet. I probably lost as many as I have. Old Leatherman Super Tool. Somebody gave this to me as a gift. I started buying the Surge, which is my favorite one now. I use the Surge all the time. The one thing I don't like about the Surge though is when you go to close it, it gets jammed up like that. And if you force it, it feels like you're breaking something. So Leatherman, if you're paying attention, which you're probably not. I got... I think three mutts, but this one's broken. And I know everybody's gonna say they have a lifetime warranty. That's fine. 
If they want to come here and pick these all up and replace them, they can. Here's another Surge with a case that I made with its own little pocket with all the tools in front. This too has a broken lever here. This is broken. That's why I don't carry this one as much. This doesn't stay where it's supposed to stay. Just a, a simple switchblade. This is a Benchmade Spike. This is one of the first knives that I really started carrying in my pocket on a consistent basis. So this is bone handle, crisp blade, small enough to keep in my pocket, big enough to get arrested. I also carry a lot of these, these like kind of just like classic little pocket knives. This is stainless steel. This is probably made in China, knockoff. This is a secret switch blade. The handles shift to unlock the blade. I have a couple of these. This isn't a real Microtech. This feel is, it's, even though it's a knockoff, it's nice and strong. It was about 100 bucks. I bought a lot of these knives over the years at uh, Ophelia's Knife Shop in Sun Valley, Arizona. This is just a cheap Smith & Wesson. I might have got this at Home Depot. Smith & Wesson Viper, made in Taiwan. Like that. It's from that same knockoff company. This has got a nice solid weight to it. It's, it feels like it's got a little bit of like a rubber finish on it, although it's just a satin steel finish. These are all automatic, so when you see the overhead shot, this whole side, from a policeman friend of mine. It's a, a Boker, sold in Germany, there's the button. This is the my main cool ice pick I got at an antique shop. This is the original Wave, 20th anniversary Wave. This is a, a Benchmade Infidel. Despite its price, sometimes it doesn't work, but I still love this the styling of it, it's really sexy. This is the Benchmade Pagan. This is really nice. It's also from Sun Valley, Arizona, Ophelia's Knife Shop. I collect knives too whenever I see something with a weird action. You open it up and then you have sort of like a fixed blade. <laughs> Another Leatherman wave, goo all over the blades. This is the, again, Leatherman. How come every time I go to close this I feel like I'm breaking it? Why is that? I can't even jam that shut. Then I gotta pry it open again, and then try and close it gently. That's one thing that always, why is that? Why can't I just close this? It gets jammed up. Saad used to make really good knives. Now they make okay knives. I think most people know that. Uh, knives that were made in Siki, Japan are super, super high quality. I love this knife. I always think I'm gonna start carrying it more often, but it's obviously gonna put me in jail for five days, so I don't carry it. I'll show you the one knife that I carry most often, and this is, uh, I bought two of them when I bought them about 20 years ago. Another SOG. This is the SOG Pentagon. This is the one I carry in my car, in my backpack, in my pocket, and I put this case, I lost the original case, which is fine because I never liked it. I made this little sheath so that I could stick this knife down in my front pocket. It's just acrylic, and I go like that, and I slide it straight down into my front pocket. Recently, I bought another one of these just to see what the quality was because they've changed. So this is this is a SOG Pentagon that's made now. You can compare the difference. The shape of the blade is kind of goofy looking. The knot here is kind of goofy looking. The rubber molds kind of goofy looking. There's just something very sexy about this original version compared to the new one. That being said, this is still a very sharp knife. I use it a lot for a lot of different things. Protect. It's a high quality one. But unfortunately, it opens in my pocket all the time. I go to get up and it's like this. I'm trying to pull it out of my pocket and it ends up cutting my pocket. So far, I never cut my leg. So I don't carry it that much in my pocket. I keep it in a toolbox usually. My brother honeymooned in Italy and he came back with like 25 switchblades to give out to me and friends. I got this at a gift shop. It's a bottle opener. And I bought it to modify it for a video, but it never works. I'm sure once I open it up, I can get it going. Little fruit knife. Uh, I probably got this at a garage sale. And this is uh, interesting because this is just a Chinese made knockoff of the Spike. Uh, this one, it's exactly the same shape. And you can see how long the blade should be on the Spike, but I've sharpened it so much. And uh, it's just a poorly made knockoff of it. This is a, a 110 buck automatic. And I put that bell clip on there. In New York City, what the cops do is they run around and they look for innocent people 
like me and Dave and just hardworking individuals that happen to carry a pocket knife. And if they see that military clip outside the, the edge of your pocket, they throw you on the ground, shove your face in the dirt, and put you in jail for the night and say that you've been carrying a weapon. So obviously this is considered a weapon in their eyes. So I put this belt clip so that it hangs below. It doesn't really look like your typical knife clip, so they don't really suspect anything when they see just this brass sticking out of the top of my pocket. 256 screws and then cut them off in a little crazy glue and that's been holding for about 10 years. This is just a little wire stripper from Leatherman. I bought that at Radio Shack and it says Radio Shack right on it. It's probably an antique now. These are marbles. Again, cheap knives but they're good enough to romp around with. This is, uh, I got this at Smoky Mountain Knife Shop. I put the, the, the clip on it myself. This has been like my number one food knife for like about the past eight years and as always, when I find the knife I like, I buy two of them in case I lose the first one I started using. I got this at Cabela's, I think. And this is really cool. I love mechanisms on knives. And you watch the handle get shorter while the blade gets longer. And what's happening there, it locks. And you push that button to unlock it. It's a, it's a knife to fillet fish. It's a fisherman's knife. This is the, the Special Elite 2. Siki Japan. This is an old one. I love this knife. It just kind of gently plops out and... I was always able to just plop it out, put it right back in my pocket. But, you know, unfortunately, carrying something like this will put me in jail probably for about a week. I, I pushed it for many, many years. I carried these all the time. I still do, but not as much as I used to. I like that it's kind of stripped down, though, but just a cheap knife. Probably got it from my brother. Gerber makes a pretty decent set of knives, and this is before Bear Grylls got involved. And this is... Real sexy, just a slim piece of steel boot knife. I've had this probably for 15, 20 years. I don't know. You knife nerds will know exactly when these things came out. And this is the, the prized possession of my collection. I bought this at the uh, Hell's Kitchen flea market about 17, 18 years ago from a vendor. I think I paid $60, $70 for it. It's a Kissing Cranes by Rose Free. I guess I've owned it since before 94 because when I was reading about how Anna Nicole Smith was killed, they describe this exact knife. I don't know how they know that. I don't think they found the murder weapon, but they describe this Kissing Cranes knife with the wavy blade that's 15 inches long. Because I like these knives so much, I ended up buying this sort of knockoff package of them. I bought like five or six of them. And this one I actually turned into a switchblade. It kind of flops open like an old jalopy. But I made this into an automatic probably 15, 16 years ago. I don't know, a long time ago. Uh, this knife I bought in, in probably Colorado somewhere, and this was in a gift shop in the Rocky Mountains. I can't remember exactly where. Handmade by a knife maker. It just says I-A-N on it. If anybody knows who made this. Ian. Did Ian make this? Ian, if you're out there, make yourself known. It's razor sharp. Broken leather, man. I don't know how that broke or why it's still here. This is a knife I actually overpaid for. If any of you can guess how much this knife cost, then I'll feel better that I actually spent the right amount. So if you see this Langoul and you know how much it could cost, put it in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll give you the thumbs up if you guessed the right amount. I bought this at, the, uh, at a Philip Stark Hotel when I was on vacation. And just the setting alone will give you the idea of where to start guessing. Fruit knife, food knife. This one's by Charade. This is a pretty good one. It's dirty. It still has food on it from the last time I used it. Another little switchblade. Blue handles. I bought this at Ophelia's Knife Shop. This is just a gag knife I bought. I think I bought this at a flea market in Florida. This was like 15 bucks, believe it or not. But it's pretty badass, cool looking, giant pocket knife. This is a little buck knife from my buddy Bobby in Louisville. Thank you, Bobby. This is a Protex switchblade, which is so badass and so sharp and pointy. This is like carrying an ice pick. I love it. This my dad gave me. Ross Fry switchblade from the 1950s, 60s. This thing is killer. I looked it up online the other night when I was preparing for this, and I found one for $700. This is a, just a, an Uncle Henry from Charade. Just the, you know, this is for prying open paint cans. This is a part of that package. I bought a bunch of these knockoffs. This is just one I haven't modified yet. The Leatherman rebar. It's 
got changeable stuff. So this is kind of like pre-mutt kind of concept stuff. Is it an automatic? No, this is just a regular buck knife. <laughs> Here's kind of new, the new SOG, more gimmicky stuff. It's got a flashlight in it. Pretty decent knife, but I have two of these and one of them never works. The flashlight never works. It's the Out the Front by Charade. There's something cool about it, and I've been carrying this because I'm trying to modify this. Another little belt clip situation from Gerber. This is just a cheap little knife. It was slim. I might have got this at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Cheap dagger a friend gave me. <laughs> it looks like something you'd get at a carnival. But it, the case is kind of kind of nice. This is a, a SOG flash, which is pretty cool. These are really good knives. You get these at Home Depot. This is my oldest knife, at least that I bought. I've had this since like the early 80s, since I was a little punk. It's a 007. This style was kind of really popular in the early 80s and the late 70s. I put the belt clip on it. I carried this for about two years. I never got caught with it, thankfully. This was a switchblade I carried really all the time. The, blade, the, the, the spring is broken. It doesn't work anymore. You can see how I broke the tip off and resharpened it. I polished off the, the anodization. I use this knife all the time, and I even engraved my name on the back of it. See my name on the back? Yeah, this is a great Benchmade knife, but this has been used and abused. Another food knife. I buy these at flea markets and garage sales. This is a great knife from SOG. This is like the epitome of a sexy, cool, strong knife. I bought this in Hong Kong at a knife shop there in Hong Kong in the, in the mall. And I want to carry this all the time, but it's too heavy. This is the Benchmade I just showed you, but here's another little baby version of it. You can see that it's the same knife, big and small. This is a Gerber combat folder. I carried this knife for a long time too. This is a, a, a SOG fixed blade with the flashlight. Again, I've had two of these. One of them I modified for the witch blade. And uh, this is a brand new one. The one I modified for the Witchblade was the one that I had been using that the flashlight never worked. So This is another cool knife from SOG. I have a love-hate relationship with the, uh, the new stuff, but the old stuff is just amazing. SOG Bowie 2. This is badass. And you can see here, I came home one day and my dog Lucky was chewing on it. He had found it, pulled it out of my tool bag. He likes leather, and you can see he was chewing on it, literally, with his paws on the blade. I thought he had cut his paws, but thankfully he did not. You'd like wear that around your neck. It's from Mike Santulli. Another little flashlight sog. I just bought a bunch of these on Amazon when I was doing research for the Witchblade stuff. Uh, another Buck Automatic conversion. This is an old one. I bought this is probably 15 years ago, 14 years ago. I haven't really used it. It's a little sticky. A Chinese version of my favorite spike, but with a switchblade in it. Here's another automatic buck. This is a cheap version. This isn't a true buck, but it's a switchblade. I carried this for quite a while because this, the bucks are just so expensive, and this was like 50 bucks. And uh, I use this so much that the, the lock doesn't work anymore, so I stopped carrying it because it's folded back onto my hands a couple times. This is the classic black switchblade. You can't get any better. This is like, so this is the new version of this old knife. So it's automatic. So you can see the original version I like with the good finger scallop. And then this is their new reinterpreted version, which is kind of a little hokey looking. And the clip is in the wrong direction. So I don't know. I don't know why they, they get a good formula and they just don't keep making the same one. This is cool. Sometimes I, I buy these cool things. This is a lighter. And for some reason, it's got a little automatic in it. I don't know. Might have got that on Temple Street in Hong Kong. This is a, a cool little assist from SOG that I bought at Smoky Mountain Knife Works about a year ago. And it, it always opens in my pocket. I know it's got all these little stopper switches to keep it, but even that, it still opens in my pocket all the time. I literally ripped open my pocket trying to pull it out, so I don't carry this anymore. And it's a, a charade. I had this for probably 25 years. I put the keychain loop on it. And I cut those scallops at my mother's house when I was a kid. These cute little Chinese knockoffs of the Benchmade. I had two of these. When I bought them, I had two of them. I lost one on the bus in New York City, believe it or not. I, let, I got up out of the seat, and I realized when the bus drove away that it was sitting on the seat behind me. So this is the second one. When I bought these, I bought two of them. I like this knife because it has a cool grip on it. The grip always felt really nice, machined. 
Marbles makes really cheap knives, but they're good to kind of romp around with and pry open paint cans. I was always a big fan of G.I. Joe when I was a kid, and he always carried a little plastic K-Bar. And then when I was old enough to buy one, this is the K-Bar I bought probably 25 years ago. I never use it for anything. It's still in perfect condition. I've only ever kept it in boxes where I collected my knives. I thought this was cool, but I hate the graphics all over the knife itself. It's a cool attempt at a sexy shape, but I can't stand this graphic burned in the blade. So I never use it. This is a K-Bar gift from my friend David. It's like a mini one. And I don't even know if it's actually a K-Bar, but it looks like one. Ontario Knife Company on the back. I don't like Spydeco knives. I just don't like the way they look and the way they work. I know many will disagree with me, but this is the only Spydeco knife I have. This little tiny one. Another little pocket knife, probably from my dad. This is from Charade. Little pocket knife from Charade. And then there's my Witchblade 1. The sheath broke. Obviously, it was a bad weld. Um, so there's the Witchblade 1. And then the Witchblade 2. And I'm actually talking to manufacturers right now. I get getting this made so as soon as I know more about this I'll let you guys know thank you to my 200,000 subscribers when I hit 300,000 I'll come up with another interesting video and reveal some more cool things that I own thank you very much all your comments are read and appreciated so it keeps me going thank you